Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about rumination, which is different from worry, and it's something that makes us more miserable and can actually maintain or even precipitate a depressive episode, and it can limit post-traumatic growth. So stay tuned and I'll explain. Hello and welcome to Wellness with John. I'm John Peters and these are resources to help you thrive. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about rumination because rumination is a very common mental state, psychological state that we get into, but sometimes it can put people at risk of developing a frank depressive episode. And for people who are having depressive symptoms, rumination actually can maintain that depression or worsen the depression. And when people have experienced stressful events in the past where there actually is the opportunity for synthesis and growth, uh, rumination can actually be an impediment of that growth unless it's done correctly and unless it's mitigated and minimized uh, appropriately. So uh, first, let me explain rumination versus worry. So rumination is when we have a, a strong mental focus on challenging feelings uh, or thoughts about past events, okay? And what I'm talking about is when, let's say something happened in the, the past and a person is feeling sad about it, so they the rumination has to do with the strong, sustained mental focus on the feeling of sadness, but also on the fact of the event related to the sadness, like, oh, my dog died, my dog died, oh, my dog died. So there's a, if you look at the content of the mental activity, the thoughts that are going on when someone's ruminating, they're focusing on what happened, what they experienced, and they're focusing on the consequences. I did this and that happened. I, I made this mistake and it ended up costing my family a whole bunch of money. I made this mistake and it cost us a bunch of money. It cost us a bunch of money. Now we're poor. So it's, it's focusing on the negative consequences rather than a synthesis. Okay, I did this and here's what it means and here's that can be, how that can be helpful to me. It's also not constructive planning or solution focused. Um, okay, so that happened. Here's what I can do about it. Okay, so rumination lacks content, lacks elements that point toward agency. Like, I am able to have some control over this. I am able to do something about this, or here's, uh, here are options of what I can do about it. But it's focused on the challenging feelings related to whatever the thing is in the mental focus. And it's just focused on what happened and the consequences of it. So if you look at rumination, it's an inner narrative that supports this idea that we're not in control. Something happened, it's happening to us, uh, an experience has descended upon us, and we don't have agency to be able to change it, okay? And then the thoughts, of course, if, 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 we, if we even mildly challenge ourselves or if someone else challenges us, the thoughts actually can reinforce it and it can have a strength like, okay, yeah, you can't change that, but it happened, you know, uh, it, I'm just being honest, it really did happen and here I am, I'm stuck. Uh, that's the truth of the matter, okay? So, so there's this inner logic that reinforces the particular angle from which the person is viewing their past experience in order to maintain that, that position of looking at it from a ruminative standpoint as opposed to a solution focused standpoint or as opposed to just letting go and not necessarily focusing on it and i'm not talking about letting go in an apathetic way but having a time where there is not the focus where the focus is interrupted okay so rumination differs from worry because it, it, this is how i think about these concepts worry is about the focus on something that has not yet happened like i'm worried that my boss is going to be mad at me tomorrow when i turn that report because I don't think I did a good job. So I'm worried about something that's going to happen into the future and about the consequences of that, okay? So, so rumination is something that we sometimes differentiate in terms of types of rumination. It can be intrusive. 
Um, intrusive rumination uh, is the type of rumination that often happens during a grief process or an adjustment process, let's say after a breakup, um, or especially more immediately, uh, temporarily in time, after an event, because the brain tends to be in an elevated stress mode, and the parts of the brain that tend to cause that type of ruminative focus then cause intrusive rumination, which is where, yeah, I don't want to be thinking this way, but my, I'm just finding myself kind of uh, obsessively focused on that, okay? Um, and, and then there's brooding rumination, which is where this is often a feature of depression. And when people who are not frankly depressed get into brooding rumination, it's associated with a higher risk of becoming depressed. But brooding is where you're just subsumed into that feeling like, oh, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. I am so sad. Okay. So and, and again, I'm not poo-pooing awareness of one's emotional state. I'm not poo-pooing the mental acknowledgement of one's social, uh, emotional state. What I'm talking about is, is rumination where there's a sustained focus on the challenging aspects of one's feelings and emotional experience and a sustained swirling around in a way of thinking about the, the past experience and the current experience uh, that rob us of agency, rob us of, of the opportunity to constructively actually cope with the event, the ability to synthesize it, to learn from it, to grow from it, and to move on constructively. And also, rumination is, uh, it causes us to be stuck in a way that we don't get relief from it. So it becomes its own form of stress during a stressful situation because the rumination itself reinforces the uh, elevated stress and that just is a cycle to perpetuate whatever the miserable aspects of the actual experience might have been so so the the so what in terms of why should we care about rumination is that it's not constructive if you look at it typically um, and it's it makes us more miserable it can put us at greater risk of depression or maintain or worsen a depressive uh, syndrome. So, so the, the, just from the standpoint of the fact that it's subjectively miserable is reason enough to want to figure out how to interrupt or minimize rumination, but also the fact that it actually becomes a toxic element in what we call maladaptive responding to a challenging event, okay? So when challenging events happen, we either uh, are, have adaptive responses where we cope and we grow and we move through and beyond the event, or we have maladaptive responses where we might do things that worsen our state or are, uh, cause uh, less effective coping. So, so rumination is this swirling around in the uh, negative aspect of the experience. If you think about the, the classic, um, he's crying in his beer kind of state, okay? Someone gets inebriated on alcohol to the point where then they're all morose and, and uh, lugubrious and, uh, uh, you know, just overly sentimental. And, and, you know, from the outside looking at them, you think, well, they're pathetic because they're just subsumed in, oh, everything is awful, everything sucks. And, and you kind of, maybe forgive them because they're intoxicated, but that's, that is the state of rumination. Even if you're not intoxicated, that's the same quality of psychological state that happens when we're ruminating, okay? So, so if you're ruminating, and this is part of a depress, depression, you know that you're depressed. Of course, if you have not sought good support uh, and you're, you're facing a strong depression, uh, you may want to reach out to talk to a therapist. You may want to talk with your doctor about an evaluation for psychiatric medication because a lot of people actually improve their, their mental state spontaneously uh, after the onset of a trial of something like Pro Prozac, Paxil, Lexapro, and things like that, the antidepressants. But, but in this video, I'm wanting to give you tools so you can understand what rumination is and also for you to be more confident in being able to surf moments where you find yourself in a ruminative state, okay? 
Um, this video is not to serve as a replacement for good medical care or good therapy, right? And obviously, if you're in a crisis, call 988 or 911. But back to rumination, uh, here's some things that you can do if you find yourself ruminating, okay? One, differentiate rumination from constructive contemplation, because sometimes we do need to focus on a negative past event and how we're experiencing it in order to synthesize it and grow. So we don't necessarily want to reduce the capacity to constructively contemplate things we've experienced all the way to zero, or we would rob ourselves from the opportunity of growth. So some of that kind of focus can be constructive, but we call that deliberative rumination when you have enough control to just decide, okay, I'm actually going to schedule some time here. I'm ruminating, and I'm going to allow myself to do this for the next 10 minutes, and I'm going to focus on whatever this is and whatever ways I want to, but but 10 minutes from now, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to go distract myself and go do something that mentally unhooks me from the rumination. Some of that has been argued to be constructive for what we call post-traumatic growth, which means the ability to actually enhance our lives after a very challenging experience, as opposed to being debilitated or just recovering back to baseline. So Past challenging experiences often actually can be the articulation points in our life to become more of the people we want to be and to have growth into new ways of being in the world that are actually healthy and, and positive, okay? Uh, but too much rumination will thwart that. Some rumination that's deliberative and controlled probably supports that, but you have to be able to limit it. And it's challenging sometimes when you have... Uh, a strong inner feeling that's kind of driving the mental state, that's then, then driving the, the focus of the thoughts. Uh, it, can, it can be difficult to find success, ways that are reliable to be able to break that ruminative focus, okay? But the biggest one is distraction. So to find activities that you can do that are mentally engaging enough to distract you from your rumination. For some people, it's uh, physical exercise that tends to be uh, reliable for a lot of people, for a lot of people walking in nature, talking to a friend, talking to a pastoral counselor, talking to a coworker, um, talking with a family member, and of course, talking with a therapist. Because when we're social, even when we're, even if you're talking about the issue that you're ruminating on, when you talk about it with another person, it typically makes the mental focus more constructive as opposed to destructive, unless you're talking with another person who's just not super supportive or they're fanning the flames of your negative thinking and kind of making you worse off after the conversation than when you started. But you can gauge that. You talk with someone, you feel better afterward. Probably that, that was helpful. Um, if someone's consistently making you feel worse when you try to talk to them about something, you might want to consider changing up that strategy. But <clears throat> distraction is one way to limit the overall amount of focus that your brain is having on the ruminative process, okay? Um, I'm a fan of meditation, obviously, if you've watched any of my other videos. And one of the reasons this helps with rumination is that mindful breathing calms the nervous system. And when we reduce the activity of the stress response in our brain, we actually are less likely to be in a ruminative state because it's the stress part of our brains that tend to potentiate the rumination process. But the way that I teach mindful breathing is to have, as you know, the word component. And by the way, if you want to see a video that I made on how to practice mindful breathing, I'll put a, a link up here at the top. But um, the way I teach it, you have a word component. So you're relaxed in your body, you're breathing naturally, you're paying attention to the breath but you're saying in when you breathe in and out when you breathe out, okay? So one thing about rumination is it includes an inner dialogue. So when you're ruminating, there is an inner dialogue going on in your head, okay? It is effective to interrupt that if you do something that includes words. So singing, chanting, praying, counting, okay? Or doing mindful breathing, because when you say in, in your head, when you breathe in, and then you silently say out in your head when you breathe out, those are words, and that's using the word part of your brain to run gentle interference with your brain using the word part of your brain to do rumination, okay? So something with words 
that's not actually words associated with the thing you're ruminating on. So like if I think, if I'm sad because my dog died and then my, the words in my head are, my dog died, my dog died, right? That's going to sustain the rumination, right? But if I decide I'm going to go in, out, in, out, for the time that I'm saying those words, I'm not saying my dog died in my head or out of my mouth, right? So do something that includes words in order to reduce the rumination. Um, but, you know, it's a uh, cycle. One thing I want to make sure I reiterate that I said earlier is that when we ruminate, we're more likely to have challenged, negative, depressive kinds of mental states. Um, and, and yet it's also true that if we are more depressed and sad about something, uh, even if there's a natural logic and it makes sense why we're depressed and sad about something, that sadness and depression is actually going to potentiate rumination, right? So you can see how it can spiral. And this is something that we therapists see when we see people who are progressively worsening in their depressive syndrome, we see rumination show up and rumination helps to maintain and worsen the depressive syndrome. Conversely, we therapists see that when we are able to help people unhook from rumination, we tend to see that as a factor in breaking that depressive syndrome. And it's a factor associated with a resolution and a remittance of the depressive syndrome. So rumination itself is important to understand and to work with in order for you to be able to not spiral into something that's destructive, which is just, I'm out of control and this sucks, and move potentially into something that's constructive, which is, okay, this is what I'm dealing with, this is what I'm going to do about it, right? So some contemplation is good, too much rumination tends to make us more miserable and not be constructive and associated with adaptive responses. So I hope this is helpful. If you find this kind of content helpful to you, feel free to hit the like button below. If you have a friend that you think might benefit from uh, this video or others, feel free to share them. And I welcome comments too, because comments help me learn about how people are taking in the content in the channel, and it helps me craft ideas about future videos. And I will see you in a future video. Thanks for, for joining me today.